Hi everyone, I'm Annie Pennington, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a pair of ear jackets using a Potter USA impression die. These ear jackets are easy to make, fun to wear, and the best part is that you can get two pairs out of a single stamping. And if you're lucky, I might toss in a couple variations at the end that will allow you to make them adjustable. Make sure to check out the description box below for a complete list of tools and materials, as well as a link to Potter USA, where you can purchase the die I use and a hydraulic press. Please subscribe to my channel and follow me on social media to stay up to date on all my new tutorials. Before we get started on the project, let's talk about ear jackets. An ear jacket is a component of a stud earring that's slid onto the post after it's inserted into the ear and it dangles below the earlobe. I kind of like to think of them as accessories for an accessory. They can be made of any material, they can have faceted stones, they could be made out of wire, and they can be worn with any stud earring you have, or you can make a pair that matches the ear jacket that's in the same style. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a simple fan-shaped pair of ear jackets, so gather your supplies and let's get started. The first thing you need to do is make your stamping. You can use copper, brass, bronze. I'm using 22 gauge sterling silver sheet, and it's annealed. That's one of the big keys in making a good impression, is that the metal has to be annealed. I'm going to give you a pretty quick breakdown of how I created the stamping. Since the focus of this video is more on making the ear jackets and less a how-to on how to use a hydraulic press, I'm going to put the focus there. But if you'd like more information on how to use the hydraulic press and even to see how Kevin Potter made these dies, check out Potter USA's videos. I'll include links in the description box below. Here's the die I'm using. It's a sunburst pattern, and I chose this particular die because it's symmetrical, which you'll see is important later on in order to be able to get two pairs of ear jackets out of a single impression. To make an impression and recreate the pattern in silver, you need to sandwich the silver between the die and a pusher of some sort. Place the silver on top of the die, and then place your pusher on top of it. I'm using lead. You can also use urethane, but lead is the traditional material used for this. Yep, I'm touching lead with my bare hands. As long as you wash your hands thoroughly after handling lead and don't eat it or lick it, which no one should be doing anyway, it's perfectly fine to touch lead. It's not gonna soak in through your fingertips or anything. However, to avoid any kind of worry, go ahead and wear gloves. After you have your sandwich put together, it's time to head over to the hydraulic press. Here, I've placed my sandwich in the hydraulic press. I'm pumping the jack to raise the lower platen. Once it meets the top platen, the lead will begin to be smashed down into the silver, which is then pressed down into the impression in the die, creating the stamping. Now, let's see how it came out. This top piece is the lead, and if you flip it over, you can see that it's taken on the form of the die, so that's a good thing. That's what we want. Um, I'll set that aside and check out the silver. So this is the finished silver stamping. Um, looking at it from the back, the impression looks pretty good. The front looks good too. It picked up all the details, so I'm pretty happy with it. Um, let's go cut it out. Use a jeweler saw to cut around the stamping, and then file and sand the edges. I'm using a 4 aught blade, and I'm going slowly, um, making sure as I go that I'm staying just outside the raised area of the stamping and not cutting into it. After you cut it out, use a hand file, and then follow that with a needle file to remove the saw marks and even out the form. After you're done filing, use 400 grit sandpaper to remove any of the file marks. Use a small metal ruler to divide the stamping in half, and then use either a scribe or a pencil to mark a line down the center of the stamping. 
Then turn it 90 degrees and make the second line. This will divide the stamping into four equal parts. Cut on the lines and then file and sand the cut edges as you did before, making sure to slightly round the sharp corners. I like to hold small pieces like this in a ring clamp while I'm filing and sanding so that I don't have to strain my fingers by holding onto something so tiny. If you're making only one pair of ear jackets, you only need to cut and finish two quadrants. See this little part of the inner circle that's left on the quadrant? This is where you'll drill a hole so that the ear jacket can be slid onto an earring post. Use a scribe or a center punch um, to make a divot where you want your hole to be, and then drill a hole at each one of the divots. I'm using about a number 50 five number 50 drill bit but as long as your bit is just slightly larger than the diameter of your post you'll be good to go uh, the only rule is that the hole in the ear jacket itself needs to be smaller than the catch of your earring it has to be smaller than the ear nut so that the ear jacket can't slide off when you wear it oh and Make sure to put your hole in the ear jacket at least uh, about a millimeter from the edge so that the design itself isn't weakened. Remove the burrs from around the hole with a larger drill bit. I just like to hold it in my hand and twist it. Um, that will quickly remove the burr and create a beveled edge. After that, finish the ear jackets however you'd like. Um, I sanded mine up to about 400 grit and then applied a liver of sulfur patina. After that, I used pumice powder to remove the patina from some of the high points. If you're like me, your earlobes are slightly different lengths and the piercing in each ear is not in exactly the same spot. This makes the amount of ear jacket that's visible beneath the earlobe different on each ear. So, to allow each ear jacket to be customized, you need to be able to adjust the length of the ear jacket. And to do that, you need multiple holes. Here are two ways to make a pair of adjustable length ear jackets. For this variation, I soldered a short piece of rectangular wire on the top of each stamping. I recommend that if you do this, you solder the wire onto the back of the stamping rather than the front. That way the extension isn't visible when it's worn. First, you'll need two quadrants of the stamping. Cut out the arc at the tip of each piece and file and sand that cut edge smooth. Cut two pieces of rectangle wire about 3 eighths of an inch long. File one end of each wire flat and then use a planishing hammer to forge the flat end into a slight paddle shape. Then file and sand the paddle ends. Sweat a couple pallions of hard solder onto the paddle ends and then solder the wires onto the stampings. Solder only flows where the metal is clean and where there's flux. So if you want to prevent the solder from flowing into your design where you don't want it, try this. Decide where you want the wire on the ear jacket and then draw a thick line with a graphite pencil on the stamping just below the end of the wire. Don't forget to put it in the grooves too. This will help prevent the solder from reflowing down onto your design where it might be kind of difficult to clean up later. Another tip is to control the amount of flux you use. Instead of covering your entire piece with flux, only place it on the stamping where you want the solder to flow. Mark and drill three holes on the silver wire, starting just above the arc in the stamping. My holes are about one millimeter apart. To make sure that the holes in each ear jacket are exactly the same distance from the bottom of the stamping, drill holes and remove the burrs in one ear jacket first. Put the two ear jackets together and make sure the bottoms of the stampings are lined up. Mark the second wire through the holes in the first. Trim the end of the wire above the last hole, round the edges, and then sand and polish the ear jackets however you'd like. This version doesn't require any soldering, but you do need two stampings instead of just one. However, because you're not limited to a single 
quadrant of the stamping, you can make the fan as wide as you'd like. Mark one stamping from the outside edge to the inner circle, and trace around the far side of the inner circle as well. This is what you'll cut out. Mark the second stamping so that it matches, and then cut, file, and sand each ear jacket. Just like in variation one, drill three evenly spaced holes in the inner circle, remove the burrs, and then finish the ear jackets however you'd like. Now that you've made a couple ear jackets, think of this as just the beginning. There are so many dies available from Potter USA that would work for this project that the possibilities are nearly endless. It's an easy project to whip up for a gift or to keep for yourself because you know you have to treat yourself sometimes. Please let me know if you have any questions, what you think about this video, and offer suggestions for future videos in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more jewelry making tutorials. Thanks for watching!